start with a new project we're going to drag in these sprites here and i'm going to re-import them without the filter so they don't show up uh, blurry then we're going to add in a sprite 3d and we'll drag on the texture onto here go into animation we're going to set vertical frames as five because there are five rows in it and then horizontal is four because there are four columns now if i step through frame here you can see how it animates like that so First, I need to billboard it here. Uh, go into Geometry Instance, Material Override, Spatial Material. Set the flags, Transparent, Unshaded, and go into Parameters, Billboard Mode, Y Billboard. And then let's go back here. So I don't really want to make eight different animations. So there's a moving backwards, there's a moving forwards, and then there's diagonally left, left, and then diagonally back left. And then I can just um, use Flip H to create the right ones, um, but I don't really want to make all eight animations for that. That would be a lot of work. So I'm going to instead create a script here. Let's change the name of this to imp and clear this out. So I want to make an export variable right here we'll call it, save the scene real quick animation column export value that so then I can add in an animation player node onto this create a new animation called walk and then let's set the steps to 0.2 and the length to 0.8 here and then right here now I can key this um, value here so if I just create a key there go to the next step um, set it to 1, key that, next step, set it to 2, key that, and then finally 3, and key that. So now if I play on awake and set looping to true, you'll see that it loops from 0 to 3 and back to the start. So I can use this to choose which column I want to display a sprite from. And then in code I can choose the row, and that way I'll be able to choose each sprite to disp display on here um, every frame so it animates the walking and it can change based on direction um, based in code i won't have to make eight different animations i can just figure it out all through code so to do this let's go in here and we're going to need a reference to a camera so i'll just make a camera variable set it to null and then have a method for setting the camera and then I'm going to go into the imp here, go to node groups, and I'll make a imps group and just add it to it. And then in the process method, we'll just do a quick check to see if the camera is null and don't do anything if it is. Then we need to get some vectors. So we need to see, see these three vectors right here. If I rotate this and check local, so you can see how it rotates these vectors and stuff right here. So that's the basis. Those are, there's forward, there's left, and then there's up. Those are the basis vectors. So I can get those global, those vectors in the global, in the world by getting the transform and then getting the basis. And I want to do that for the camera and for um, the this character as well. So, and so here I'm just going to, do that for the player forward, R forward, and R left. So that's just global transform.basis.z, and this one I get the camera. And then I also negate this because cameras are flipped for some reason. Um, if I throw in a spatial node here and I add in a camera on the scene, you can see the camera's facing this way, but the Z vector faces the opposite way. So you just have to negate it if you want it to face the direction that the camera is facing. Then we're going to use the dot product. So if you don't know what the dot product is, we're just uh, left dotted with the player forward and then forward dotted with the player forward and we'll store that. So if you don't know what the dot product is, it's basically a value that indicates how much two vectors face in the same direction. So if you had a vector 
that faced forward and another one that faced in the exact same direction. And these are all normalized. They all have a length of one. Um, so they face in the same direction, it's going to give you a value of one. If they face in opposite direction, the dot product will give you negative one. If they face perpendicular, you get a zero and then anything in between. So I can use that to figure out some stuff like here I'm facing currently it's facing this way my camera's facing the opposite direction so that would give me a negative one here this will give me a zero this will give me a positive one and then this will give me like negative 0.5 this will give me 0.5 right and then I can also use this left one so this would give me the dotted with the left one that would give me one that would give me negative one zero etc so I can use that to figure out which um, row to use which direction it's moving relative to me so first off we'll set store variable for the row and also we'll set the flip to be false and then i'm going to just check if the dot product with the forward vector is less than this negative amount we're going to use row zero which is the frontward facing the one that's facing us the front sprite sprite so like if we look at this um, if I'm facing this way and this vector is facing this way, this would give me a negative one. This about here would give me a negative 85, 0.85 right here. So if we're in this area here, we want to use the front. And then if we're in positive 0.85, we want it to be facing away from us, which it is right now, as you can see. So I'm going to just do the same thing. So else if the dot of the forward vectors is greater than 0.85 then we use row 4 which is the facing away from us um, sprites row so otherwise if none of those are true then it, that means it's facing to the side somewhat so now we need to figure out whether or not to flip it so i'm just going to do flip h equals the left dot so what that means is this vector is facing this way if i'm facing the same direction of it that's going to give me a positive number this is still going to give me a positive number up to that which is zero so all of these are positive, right? So if I go in here and I say, if this is positive, then flip it. Because, so if we're facing in the same direction, if we're facing its right side, it's facing to our right, then we want it to flip. Because if you look at the animations here, let's see, find it here. So, here we go. So it's facing the left. So by default, it faces left. In the image, it faces to the left. So if it's facing to our right, we have to flip it so that it faces to our right. So that's all it is. So once we flipped it, and the reason I set it out here as well is because I don't want it to stay flipped. If we're if it's facing our right in the next frame, it's facing our front, or it's facing away from us, and facing we're facing us back. I don't want it to be flipped, so I just set it there. So now for checking which leftward or rightward facing one to use, we're going to take the absolute value of the front vector and see if it's less than 0.3. And if it is, we'll use the second row, which is the directly perpendicular to us leftward uh, sprite. So like this one right here. So if we're, if it's facing this way and we're facing this way, the dot product between us and the forward facing vector it's going to be zero. If it's this, it's going to be about, that's going to be about negative 0.3, and that's going to be about positive 0.3, and that's and the same thing right here, uh, positive 0.3, negative 0.3. So if I just take the absolute value and check it for less than that, then we can just use that pure leftward facing sprite. And then again, if we just check if, now we need to see if we're going to use, if it's none of those, if we've already tried all of these, then we know it's going to be we're going to use this here. We know it's going to be a diagonal movement. So like it's facing this way, that way is going to be directly to the left. But what if it's in this area? It's a diagonal movement here or a diagonal movement there. So we've checked everything else. It can only be one of those two. So all we need to know now if it's moving diagonally towards us or diagonally away from us. So to do that, we just check if our direction dotted with the forward facing vector here is negative then that means let's see hang on if it's negative then that means it's moving towards us right so 
it's facing towards us. So that means if we dot with that, it's negative. If we do that, it's facing away from us. It's um, it'll be positive. So if we just check here, if it's negative, then we want it to move forward left to do the forward left one because it's facing towards us. Otherwise, the final option is we do the back left movement. So there's nothing else that it could be. And then all we have to do now is set the frame here the animation frame from the Sprite 3D, this right here. We set it to be the animation column plus the row times four because there are four columns in the row. So that will give us everything correctly animated. So now we can create a new scene and test this out by adding in a spatial node. Then as a child, I'll add another, and I'll call this cam base. And then I'll add in a camera as a child of it. Just move this back a few steps. And then instance the imp here, right there. And then I'm also going to instance a mesh of a cube and just move that down so that we have a visual reference for seeing the rotation. Then come onto the camera base here, create this, and we're just going to, in the ready function, we'll just call the imps group and call set camera and pass in ourself. And then in the process method, we're just going to rotate ourselves on the y-axis by whatever delta is. And then let's just save this scene and run it. And so now you can see as we rotate around it, it automatically changes direction to move relative of what we're facing. And you can play around a little bit with the values to get it to turn a little more precisely if you want. 